Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Cummins. I'm the author of Book of Ninja and Ninja Skills. I'm here with Story Dive to have a look at some of the ninja films of the past to see how accurate or inaccurate they are. Okay, I remember this film. I don't remember what it's called. I totally remember it. Okay, masks. Let's start with masks. Now, the ninja mask is fake. It's not real in the sense that ninja in probably the warring periods were not using them. It's a very difficult debate, but masks do exist in Japan wholeheartedly. People wore masks to go to brothels, to go gambling, so nobody would see who they were. So to actually just see a mask in, in general public was totally fine. But this idea of putting a, a mask on your face, a hard physical mask, is actually in Japanese society, it actually shows gangster-like attributes and people, thieves and gangsters would jump in with masks. And of course, later in their history, the shinobi or the ninja did get associated with thieves. So we do know that thieves wore masks, but there is no evidence for ninja or shinobi no mono wearing masks while they're doing their job in the warring state period. Right, nobody fights like that. Nobody fights like that in the slightest. Okay, no. This is really bad swordsmanship, but of course it's an 80s movie. Right. There are no acrobatics in Japanese swordsmanship. It is ridiculous to think of the idea that you would jump about while somebody is brandishing a very deadly blade around those private parts. You just wouldn't do it. Uh, Japanese swordsmanship is very fierce, very close, very brutal and very bloody and often either resulted in you being having parts amputated or being lame or of course simply just being killed. <laughs> Classic shuriken. Okay, the shuriken. This is a de massively debated thing. So one thing we do know for sure, for absolute sure, is it's not a ninja weapon. The ninja didn't design it. The ninja didn't make it. It you know, it isn't found in old ninja manuals. It's just not there in the ninja corpus of information. But what we do know is that swordsmanship schools did use them. There are two main types. There's the stick type throwing a nail, and then there's the, the wheel type throwing a, a sort of spike to wheel. To put some spice into the mix, there are some documents from the 17, 1800s which hint at the shinobi, the ninja, using shuriken. It's still up for debate, but we know they didn't invent them, it's not a secret weapon of the shinobi, and other people knew about them and used them anyway, so it's not as ninja as everyone thinks. Oh my god, what's he doing? Okay, the inevitable smoke bomb, here we go. Right, the idea of a ninja throwing a smoke bomb down is absolutely ridiculous. Normally, shinobi no mono, ninja, go in through multiple layers of defense. They've got multiple rings of castle defense to get through, most likely palisades in the beginning. So the idea that you're, you've crept in there and you're fighting off the guard and you throw down a smoke bomb is ridiculous because you then turn around and look at the other guards at the other station who are coming over to help their friends. Why would they do it? Smash! Boom! climb the wall and all the guards are stood there going what are you doing they just didn't use this type of bomb but they did use explosives they definitely used smoke screen covers there are plenty plenty of incendiary devices smoke devices um, poisonous gas devices but they're not used in this way they're not used to throw to the floor and escape <laughs> Right, the shinobi sword, the ninja sword, or the ninja toe. So we do know for a fact that straight blades existed in Japan. That's not a problem. Square guards existed in Japan, not a problem. Very straight swords are either ancient swords or used for religious purposes. But the connection between straight bladed swords, square guards, and the ninja shinobi is just not there. As cool as it is, and it's still a mystery as to who brought it in. Okay, Ninja Team working in. I think this is um, Shogun, I think. Yeah, if I remember rightly, this is Shogun, which is one of the best ninja scenes there's ever been, Shogun. I love this scene. This is 1979 it was filmed, and I think it was let out in 1980, and it changed the way we uh, observed uh, the way of the ninja. Okay, everyone raiding and murdering. Let's have a look. 
Um, there definitely, definitely was teams of ninja. We have ample evidence and lots of instructions on how ninja teams would work, how they communicate with each other. Now we have outside on a ninja team, you have a watchman, you have door guards, you have then you have two internal performers. One is called the big dog and one is called the little dog. They are basically the person, the big dog is the guy who goes in and creeps in next to people who are asleep. And the little dog is taking messages between them and um, making sure everybody's still asleep. They've usually got things like paper in their mouth to stop their breathing. They've got sandals that are padded so that you can't hear them. They're walking in certain ways not to make the floorboards creak. And they absolutely we do or we have records saying that uh, you should like literally close all the doors doors and murder everyone inside so this is quite it's quite historical but they're missing some of the key factors okay the shinobi with the light that is quite cool actually but a little bit not wrong but no yeah it's quite good actually yes very good he's signaling to someone outside which was absolutely historically correct they would use a lot of different types of light yep they've got an inside person here now you have an agent on the inside somebody signals the agent opens the door the ninja team come in bang on perfect obviously maybe a little bit dressed like this but obviously not quite so ninja but not far off that's not bad that short spear as well they say use short spear please review for me the nine levels of power rin Strength. Okay, this is Enter the Ninja. I remember this. Oh, yes, I love this film with his white suit because the white ninjas were good and the black ninjas were bad back in the day. Okay, he's starting to perform something called Kuji In, which is the nine symbols of power, as they say, or the nine emblems, if you like, the nine um, strokes or the nine letters, the nine ideograms. Fact number one the ninjas did not invent this. Fact number two, not only ninjas use this. Fact number three is there's almost no connection to ninja and this beyond normal life. So it's the same as saying people in Asia use chopsticks, ninja use chopsticks, therefore this is a ninja thing. Totally incorrect. So the Kuji In, which is the the sort of um, hand gestures of power, uh, Rim Hyo To Sha Kai Jin Retsuzai Zen, which is the nine words of power followed by the nine emblems or the nine cuts. Rin Hyo To Sha Kai Jin Retsuzai Zen. Aun! Uh, most likely this comes from Taoism in China. Maybe it's earlier, but we do know it goes right back into the early times of history. And the idea or the current thought is that it's actually a correct Chinese sentence in old Chinese that sort of means ghosts, warriors and my ancestors or ghost warrior helpers come and protect me. And the idea would be that you would do all this stuff or you put the grid down to form protection and the ghosts would appear, warrior ghosts would come and help you fight. So this idea of Kuji is so misrepresented in the West and people don't realize that actually it's a spell of protection to help you in supernatural threatening times. Hey. Oh, bloody last samurai. I hate the ninja in this. And it was so flat, this film. It was just flat. It was just the good samurai versus the bad modern people, the ancient warrior wisdom versus the evil modernity. And then to add to that, they just said, let's find some 1980s ninja costumes and use those. Every cliche ever and put it Tom Cruise at the front and call it a film. Diabolical. So they're doing the plays, uh, which is quite good actually. So, um, the samurai here are actually doing theatre and that's quite known and lords got up themselves and did theatre. One lord is known to have done the comedy shrimp dance, whatever the comedy shrimp dance is, to entertain people around or even to confuse the enemy. And we know that the samurai were doing this. There's a lot of background contextual information about this is who's allowed to which theatre and which theatre is correct. But we do know the different classes in Japan, the four classes, uh, were going to different styles of theatre and that villages did have 
theatres and travelling theatre performers there, so I quite like that. Okay, wearing the ninja sword on the back, let's talk about that. Again, they're using straight ninja swords, which are, you know, a modern invention, if you like, or there's no real uh, connection between the ninja and those swords. Now, we do have documentation of how a ninja wore their sword, and they wore it at their side like normal samurai, because they were part of the samurai culture, but they tied it in a way that when they ran, it didn't slip out, it was secured, so that when they're running through the wilderness, they can keep it there. But when they come to something like climbing, uh, in a difficult place, they can then put the swords on their back for climbing. And because these ninja had just climbed up a roof, it's plausible that their swords should be on their back. They're just not dressed correctly, nor are they using the correct swords. Okay, I know this film, but I don't remember the name. Different people from Eagle and Coca, I think, are competing. I think they're ninjas fighting against the Lord's own retainers to show their ability. There is no way that a shinobi would turn up to a Lord and then have a fight with a sword to show his ninjutsu. Absolute nonsense. Absolute rubbish. Ninjutsu, or correctly shinobi no jutsu, is actually the art of espionage, counterintelligence, surveillance, explosives, breaking and entering covert operations, all that type of thing. You would not get in front of the Lord and demonstrate your sword or martial arts skills to demonstrate the ways of the ninja. That is 100% a 20th century invention because in the 1970s, 1980s, it became very popular to do ninja martial arts, which are not real, they're not historical. This idea that ninja can leap above others and they can throw out Darts and sugar. Absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Shinobi no Mono were very real people. They were extremely well trained. They were well trained in languages, explosives, chemistry, psychology, infiltration techniques, climbing, breaking and entering, um, probably in psychological profiling. They were also trained in medicine, uh, dancing, etiquette, literature. They were absolutely sort of trained professionals that went into war ahead of the army. So if you went into war without sending in your spies, espionage agents, covert operatives, you would start without knowing what the enemy was doing and you would have no real advantage in war. The idea of portraying a ninja as jumping around, spinning with darts coming out, throwing swords back into their scabbards is the furthest you're ever going to get from the history of the ninja, I'm afraid. Now, interestingly, I'll stop that there. Interestingly, um, ninja manuals talk about how you should project your chi when you walk. So this is actually interesting because the women there are clearly afraid they're like they're gonna do something bad and we know from shinobi manuals that you have to project almost um the essence of death and hatred and killing to get rid of animals and get rid of dogs you project um i'm gonna murder you i'm gonna kill you it's like this evil intent that hopefully animals will pick up on that's because you don't want dogs to come barking at you you don't want dogs to start biting you but the other way you do it for a ninja is that when you're doing something in disguise like these, you have to pretend to be weak. So Shinobi no Mono ninja are actually in the main samurai or military men. They're people who've been brought up since children in a sort of child soldier like way, the same as we have child soldiers in Africa, murdering people, being told that they're absolutely in control. They can almost do what they want, if you like, not without repercussions, but they've got a lot of power. So you get these young lads who are full of bravado and then they're told they have to go on shinobi missions and they have to try and hide that bravado. And the next thing you know, like these girls are walking down, they've got to hide that energy, that chi giving out that they're going to kill. So they're like, mm, 
Um, I've got to give out the energy of sort of softness, weakness, softness, weakness, and then make the kill. And that's what these women clearly are showing. Their, their, their chi energy, if you like, is showing to the gentleman here, Lone Wolf, that um, they're going to do something wrong. So the idea of how you approach a ninja mission absolutely is shown in this clip that they are doing it wrong. They're absolutely doing it wrong, and he knows. Okay, I think I know this film. Right, the snorkel. So this is a, another point that's debated in the ninja world, is do these snorkels work? Some people say no, they didn't. Some people say they did. I'm an absolute supporter of that, the shinobi, the ninja use snorkels. Basically, because modern people, we also use snorkels. We know how snorkels work. Now, the idea here, this is from Natori, you, you use a short scabbard with a hole in the end usually a wakizashi, which is a short sword. And you go into the moat, or you would use a short pipe. And when you go into the moat, like this guy is doing, you actually don't go across the surface that way. You go under, come up, breathe out, go under, come up, breathe out. Also, um, we have the idea in Mubyoshi Ryu that if somebody's chasing you, you've just made a shinobi raid, somebody's chasing you, you take your katana scabbard out and you smash it in half, with your katana, turn your katana upside down, jam it into the riverbed of a flowing river, and you go under the water, hold on, and you breathe like this. Now it does say you should use some type of breathing exercise, or there's a specific way to breathe through it. But in all accounts, we have this shorter snorkel length snorkel, which to me just screams historical reality. Absolutely. Okay, let's see what this guy does. Obviously, he's going to climb the wall. Now, however, though, what we should know here, he's climbing up out of the water, is that those type of stone bases in Japan have existed for quite a long time. But actually, when the ninja were working, they normally were working in the 13 to the late 1500s, which means castles were different. So here we see we've got a castle with the sloping stone foundation to the white tower. Now they were invented much later, much, much later um, in the scope of Japanese history. So most shinobi stuff would have been done through wooden palisades, but all these type of films, they always inject uh, late Sengoku period to early Edo period castles when the shinobi probably would be petering off from this sort of stuff. Okay, what well, my number one film is Sakura Killers. Uh, I watched it a thousand times. Uh, this scene is the introduction scene from it. Um, there's a secret laboratory where they've got like their uh, curing world hunger or something and they've sent the ninja to get it. This is the most ridiculous bit where he climbs up. There we go. Ooh, that's just ridiculous. Those claws, by the way, I've yet to find in a ninja manual. I can't find them anywhere. Claws do exist. As in like claws like this, but they exist in India. They exist um, in different places. Some people have put forward the idea that they used to be carrying like straw or bales of straw or to pick up agricultural things, they're agricultural tools. But I have only seen one reference to claws and that's in the Ban Sen Shuka, or the Book of Ninja Manual, where it says use tiger claws, which in my opinion are probably the claws on the inside that they used in India to scratch or hurt people. But it doesn't give us any information about it. I wish those claws were real. I really like the idea of the claws, but I'm yet to find them. I remember watching this as a kid multiple times. I think I even made one of those. Now the Shinobi crossing different surfaces was absolutely a historical problem for them. They 100% had to worry about what was under their feet and how to get across from like ice um, all the way to squeaking floorboards. Now as the famous floorboards where they're called the nightingale floorboards and they've got metal under metal beneath them so that they squeak when somebody walks on them. Some people have said these are to deter ninja and intruders but I've also heard another theory that they're there to stop people sleeping with each other at night because people used to be walking up and down the corridors and I think uh, you know interfering with each other. So they were put there so the sort of master of house could tell who was walking where. I've yet to find the answer to that. But as for Sakura Killers, one of the best ninja films ever, and there's 
and many more scenes from that film that I wish we'd have done. Superb. Right everyone, that's the end of the video. I just want to say thank you to Story Dive and I hope you've enjoyed that because I enjoyed doing it. And let us know in the comments below what are your favourite ninja films or any ninja films you think we should have a look at. Story Dive here. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more of it, Anthony has posted an extended cut of this video with an extra 7 minutes of him talking about Ninja. You can check that out on his channel, linked in the description below. If you want to know more about the Shinobi, aka Ninja, I recommend you check out The Book of Ninja, which is a translation of real historical documents on ninjutsu or shinobi no jutsu called the Bansen Shukai, the Ninja Bible. That is also linked below and let us know which ninja fiction you'd like Antony to break down next, including anime. Check out my videos on the real culture and history behind Naruto and One Piece linked on the screen. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss more videos like this. Thanks for watching and until next time.